I'll tell you all about it. That was real good. That was like, that was money, first of all. Let's do another. Hey everyone, I am Chris Knight, and you are watching The Real Review 3000, here again with another vocal review, not a reaction, because uh, with these, I've either seen them before, I've already formulated an opinion, or have an opinion pretty strongly on these, and I like to be honest with you guys, um, reactions definitely are our first time, I've never seen this before, or this is a new version of something I've never seen before, this is not the case this time. This is another... Uh, request by gamer guy nerd gaming and i will put his information down below in the comments or not in the comments but down in the description <clears throat> and this one is live at deer creek 1993 foreigner with lou graham and it is i want to know what love is i believe um so really quick I've, I've pretty much made this known lou graham was a very 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 good vocalist probably one of the best of the 70s and 80s um live he's just really good this again is more what i call stadium rock these stadium rockers these groups like journey steve perry uh foreigner uh, spyro gyro uh dire straits steely dan yeah, it's at times uh, Pink Floyd. These groups were so technical live. And yes, they had a lot of processing power going with it. And this was something new to the late 60s, 70s, and in the 80s. Things just became so electronically based that they could do these great shipping in, which means that they could ship in background noises or parts that they normally couldn't do. So a lot of things became much more technical and you could make it sound like the original recording more short of your performers and your vocalists and stuff. But even then, um, Foreigner was one of the best at not speeding up things. They sounded very original. Um, a lot of bands, when they go live, they get a little faster. Things go faster for them, and then the timing is um, a little quicker. Songs go a little quicker, and you normally will notice this. Um, it's really an a testament to the rhythm section bassists and drummers when you can get that timing down to the original timing and foreigner was really really good at that uh, journey was really really good at that a lot of those other bands were really really good at that and i always call these stadium rockers or um, progressive rock things like that they were very particular about their performances and the sound when they went live so when you went to go see them live they always sounded like the recording, short of the vocalist who would be moving around. And of course, that just changes how much breath you have and stuff. And you'll notice that with Lou Graham, but he does such a great job of staying on target for the vocals. Um, you'll notice that sometimes he won't be able to hold a, a note out as long or something, but he still does it great and with a lot of technical ability. Um, so with that said, we're going to go over here to the reaction screen, get the headphones on, and we're going to go three, two, one, review. <clears throat> Again, live Deer Creek, 1993. And that time, that timing. Very, very technical. See, difference in vocal, but it fits. All right, there. Um, and and typically, if you're in a band, you do these songs. See, and he, he does that very well. But you do these songs to kind of give you everyone a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather because they're not required to be jumping around and moving around all over the place. And then here... 
Pinkerton's power. You see, and he's right on with it. I mean, this was a great concert around just across the board and done very well with videography but um we I mean, listen to him he, he he's right on with this stuff I mean again I always talk about this feeling your technical abilities aren't nearly as important as that feeling. When he, when they wrote this song, there was a feeling. Something, somebody inspired these vocals. And, and, and looking in his eyes, looking in his face, this means something to him. And that's where the vocals are coming from, not from his technical abilities. His technical abilities fix the issues. I don't have as much breath. I, I can't hit that note right now. I gotta remember where to hit it, I, that it sounds right. The rest of it though, is feeling. Broken hearts, love lost, whatever. I mean, look at them. I mean, just, mm, it hits you in the heart and, and you feel it. And then the choir comes in. I love that. I mean, listen to them. I mean, this guy's been on stage for a while. You know it. You can see it. He's sweaty and stuff. But, man, listen to him. He still has it. And the fact that you, you add the choir in the background like it is on the recording, that even, even more states the fact that these bands were particular about sounding as close to that recording and giving you the exact thing you came to see and hear. I mean, listen to this guy. It's nuts. I mean, I mean the, just the way he's holding these notes and he's getting these notes out. I, I just I'm in awe of this guy with these with, with the way he does this stuff um, you know I remember growing up with Foreigner and even as a child I felt feelings I didn't necessarily understand them but but they could make you feel it and, and you may not be able to interpret them until you're much older but you, you knew what you were thinking that first girl you had a feeling for or whatever these feelings were non-interpretable, but these songs helped you kind of understand it. These songs, you're like, that's what I feel. That's what I feel. And Lou Graham and Foreigner were very, very good at making you understand these things this way. And the, uh, the extended length of these songs sometimes on stage, you know, he's getting the, the crowd into this, but he's enjoying it too, you can tell. He, he likes having these guys out there, uh, the, the choir and everything. I uh, Just crazy right there. He's... I mean, look at how much he's enjoying this. That, that lets you know that he's in this for a good cause. Say what you want. Again, I've said this before. Call these guys sellouts. Call you whatever they... Whatever you want. Just because a band becomes popular and is mainstream does not mean they're a sellout. That's just what they do, and it just so happens they got hit right at the right time for making music that everybody else wanted to hear. Um, you can call them a sellout, but they're not. This is what they did. They didn't change necessarily just to get to this. Um, this is very true.
true to who they were. Now, yes, there are bands out there that just say, oh, look, this is the popular thing, let's jump on board. They normally get there near the end of it, and you know it. Um, but Foreigner, listen to this guy. I mean, I mean, these guys were just the top of their game in the late 70s and 80s and even today when you when you hear Lou Graham he's still able to do a lot of this stuff um it's really amazing I I, I really do have to say that it's amazing These are the <laughs> right here. And don't they seem fine? yeah you know we just got a soul injection right here <laughs> See, I mean, he loves this, and he felt it with these guys out there. He felt this, and that's uh, that's really what's important. Um, yeah, oh, my God, <clears throat> Lou Graham. You know, the, the, he's one of those guys that, as a vocalist, you inspire to be. Um, there's a lot of them for me. You know, there's Bono. There's I'm a John Lennon fan. I'm a Paul McCartney fan. Beatles in general. Uh, I love Pink Floyd. I love the way that they did the back and forth vocals when it was Gilmore and Waters. Um, you know, Journey, Steve Perry. Uh, you know, just a whole bunch of them out there. Um, there's certain people you point blank pick. I pick a lot more than I probably should because I have a very wide variety of vocal likes and uh, musical uh, sounds that I like. But um, Lou Graham was... a what well, is um, a special kind of vocalist in the way that you can tell that there's truth there. He, he at least when it comes to his musical abilities and his in the way he does things, there's a truth behind his words, the truth behind how he sings it. Um, again, that feeling behind it. If you feel it, if it grips you inside and it pulls at you, think of that five times, at least five times as much. It's doing the same thing to him. And it's pulling at him just as much and tons more than you because he's the one that came up with it or he's the one that was given the song to sing. Um, I don't, I, I'd have to go back and look and see. I'm pretty sure he helped write that song, but... Um, if you write a song and you sing a song, trust me, the feeling put behind that song, if you feel it, they felt it so much more. And Lou Graham was that type of a vocalist, writer, um, musician. Uh, he was always just the type of guy that could rip into your your, your rib cage and, <clears throat> and just grab at your heart and let you know you're going to feel this. And it's not going to be a bad feeling. You're going to really like this. Even if... Even if it's a song that um, th that instills feelings of past loves that lost and people you loved but um, they're gone now in one way or another and it makes you want to cry, that's still a good feeling because it's needed. You need to react. You need to have that emotion. And these certain songs, such as this song, get that out of you. And that's really important. So... Guys, I've been asking this a lot lately, uh, just a few things. One, uh, the intros at the beginning, the Real Review 3K Presents, and my regular Real Review 3000 intro. I'd like to know which one you like more, because um, I'm going to cut it down to one or the other for these regular videos. The live streams will definitely be just the Real Review 3000. Um, so with that, I'd like you guys to let me know which one of those. I'll do a Twitter poll here before too long. Also, please hit the like, hit the subscribe if you have not subscribed already, and hit the bell so you know when we're coming out with new stuff. We're going to try to get up to five videos a week now. That's Monday through Friday, and uh, we're going to have our live stream on Mondays as normal tonight, uh, and we're going to try to get there. It shouldn't be too hard. we got a good setup now here, but um, if you guys would like to have me react to something or review something, please put it down in the comments or you can email me Chris Knight at the real review 3000.com. You'll also see it on the outro links video. With that said, I am Chris Knight. This is the real review 3000 and I'm officially out. Of here. Hey guys, thanks for checking us out. Be sure to subscribe to both channels. 
and make sure to check out our friends in the Fandom Minutes. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and BitChute. And you can also send us an email at sean at seanstackhousereacts.com and Chris Knight at therealreview3000.com. Be sure to swing by our Teespring store to pick up some awesome merchandise. 